what is going on everybody in the last few weeks i decided to purchase uh, luminar ai and test it compared to luminar 4 which i've had for a while um, i was able to test both things and figure out kind of what's better about each program and what kind of photographer would like one versus the other so in this week's video i'm going to show you guys uh, a little bit of what both can do what both the interfaces are and kind of what's cool about each program so and then i'm going to let you know um, which software is going to be better for you depending on on what you want with your post-processing experience for editing your photography. So I'm gonna jump right in there to Illuminar 4 first. I'm gonna be jumping in with the same photo. I've already edited this photo. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of show you a few of the things that I've done and what the software can do. So let's go ahead and jump right in there. So the first program I'm gonna show you here is Luminar 4. Now this is the older version of Luminar compared to Luminar AI, but I actually prefer this Luminar 4 to AI, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly why. So in Luminar 4, you've got tons of options here. Um, you can, when you're in the edit tab here, you can start up at the top where you have layers. So this would be helpful if you wanted to combine multiple photos together um, or do basically whatever you'd need to do that combines multiple layers. Um, we also have an option for canvas. So this is where we can do some spot healing. Um, we can do some cloning. Um, you can crop, you can um, do some lens distortion, whatever you wanna do, you can do that here. And then we can actually go down into the essentials. And I wanna stress uh, how cool this software is because there's a lot of these companies now that are making these programs to compete with Photoshop and Lightroom that are really similar to Photoshop, but also similar to Lightroom in the way that all of these edits are saved uh, on this program and you can go back and edit them at any time. It's totally non-destructive. So that is the really cool thing about this software. So. We also have um, right here the essentials, as they call it. You're able to adjust really pretty much anything that you would need to adjust. So you can go down, adjust the exposure, the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, the whites, or the blacks. You have a curves uh, bar here. So you really have a ton of different options. Um, they also have some really cool things that I actually do really, really like here. Um, the first being the AI Enhance. Um, so this is uh, technically an AI feature because the software is, I guess, smart enough to know what should be enhanced. Um, this is something that I usually test on a lot of different photos here to see how they work. It may not work the best on this photo because this isn't really a standard cookie cutter photo with a nice sky and uh, a nice little foreground. This is really stormy, so it's hard for the program to determine probably what the sky is there. Um, but that is a really cool feature there. You've got enhanced, you've got structure as well. The structure can be pretty nice to add on here. Um, so I do like the structure. Um, you can play with the boost. You can also use a mask on any of these, which is really nice. Uh, if you wanted to just add structure to the sky or the foreground, you could do that. You've got some options for colors. You can hit advanced settings, pretty much exactly what you'd expect. The remove color cast is actually really nice to have. Um, I've used that a lot more than I actually thought that I would. So you can see how I'm getting rid of those kind of purple tones in the image. So it's looking really nice there. Um, by just removing the color cast. So that's a super nice feature that they have. Um, you can do black and white, of course, which I'm not gonna do. I'm not a huge black and white guy. You've got detail enhancers. Now this is really nice uh, to have this little detail enhancer. Basically, this is a way of adding fine-tuned clarity or contrast to the really fine spots on your image. You can see that I've added way too much, but you can see the effect that it has. You'd wanna dial this back down a little bit. So really nice to have that feature as well. Um, of course, we can denoise. Um, we can do the landscape enhancer. These have things like dehaze, golden hour, and the foliage enhancer. So these are nice. Um, the golden hour especially is really nice if you've got a nice sunset. Obviously here, I don't really have a nice golden hour sunset. I've got a storm, so it's not gonna apply to this photo. Um, and then of course you have a nice vignette. Now the vignette is really nice here because it works in really slowly compared to other programs that I've used. So when I bring this back, you can see that it does take a second to load, but you can toggle this on and off, and there it is. So you can see uh, I'm minus 44, and it's still pretty subtle, which I like a lot. So that's looking really nice. You can also choose the subject, which is cool. So you can kind of select the center of your image, essentially. Um, so the options are, are endless. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that though because I don't wanna do that. And you can see we do have a little bit of time to process. Um, 
but it's I haven't really noticed it to be too much terribly longer than any other software. So after you get out of the Essentials tab, you've got Creative as well. Now in the Creative tab, there's tons of cool things. Uh, you can do a sky replacement, so you can turn this on and actually replace the sky with a different sky. Um, you can do Augmented Sky, which is going to be where you can add things like a moon or a plane or something like that to your sky. You can add sun rays. The sun rays is a really awesome feature. I've used it a few times and I really, really like it. I'm probably gonna make a video in the future about how to use sun rays. Um, you can do dramatic. Dramatic is kind of nice. It just adds a lot of contrast and probably a few other things. I haven't exactly figured out what it's adding, but it is really nice um, to add that. A lot of times I'll use a uh, mask with that. Um, but the dramatic is pretty cool. Matte look is not really that useful for landscape photography. Mystical um, can be kind of nice. It adds a little bit of glow. Um, it's pretty similar to the Orton effect, even though we do have a glow option down here. Um, I don't usually use color styles or texture overlay. Uh, we can get down to the glow. You can add a glow. You can do soft focus bright, soft focus, or soft glow. So you've got lots of options there. And then, of course, film grain and fog. You also have options here uh, if you were editing portraits. I do not edit portraits very often, so I don't have one to show you here. Um, and you also have what they call professional adjustments. These are things like the advanced contrast, um, the adjustable gradient. You can dodge and burn. You can enhance those colors. Um, you can put on a photo filter, and you can use split toning. So tons of different options. They didn't leave anything out here. Um, now... A lot of you may have Luminar 4. You may be thinking about purchasing Luminar 4 or Luminar AI. So we're going to hop into Luminar AI right now. Now, the main difference between Luminar AI is that it makes it so that you can edit your photos faster. So the first thing is when you load it in, uh, you have these templates. And of course, you have a few templates in Luminar 4, but I believe there's more templates here in Luminar AI. So the templates are kind of cool because you can actually go in and you can make an adjustment, a fast adjustment to your photo. So these are just a few of the templates they have. This is the big city lights collection. Um, I might go back and instead I might do easy landscapes. And all these are is essentially you are just choosing a preset, um, but there's tons of presets. I know you can download more online. So there's so many different options. You can also lower the opacity. So you can combine multiple of these um, templates to create exactly what you want. We're going to go with this one for the time being. Of course, you can go without using a template if you wanted. So we're going to go in, into edit and you're going to see there is pretty much the same stuff that we have in uh, the other program in Luminar 4. We've got our things like light, structure, um, color, black and white details, denoise, landscape, vignette, all these things that I've seen before. But the difference is you'll see all of these little ones that say AI, um, meaning that the software is going to be a little bit smarter, I guess, and select the particular spots on your image to work. So all of these that say AI are gonna do that, which is really cool. You can even have the composition AI go to work for you. So if I hit composition AI, um, this photo will crop to what it thinks a good crop would be. So you can see that it crops my image down right there, keeps my subject in here, it keeps my lightning in, and it cuts off this ugly railing on the side. So a really cool way there to just kind of fast edit your photo. Now you've also got the options for creative. You can go into the sky. Um, you can change the sky just like you could before, um, but this is using the AI technology and um, on, if you are in AI technology, this is like top of the line stuff. I really like this a lot. You can see if I just click and add this, this will take a second to load. It's probably not going to load very well because I'm guessing how the AI works is that it finds your sky by using the foreground. Yeah, as you can see, it didn't work too well because... Um, and if you're interested in this, don't get discouraged by this not working. The reason why it doesn't work very well is because it needs that hard horizon line to detect the sky. But because we have all this gray coming down, it thinks that this is also in the sky when in reality it's just rain. I'm guessing you guys aren't going to have a lot of photos like this where you have just this huge rain coming down. And either way, you wouldn't want to use the sky replacement anyways. So like I said, tons of options. The AI is pretty cool. You can add some fog, um, I mean, you can do pretty much anything that you could do before, but the AI is a little bit smarter. So 
tons of options. It's I do really like how this one is laid out in terms of it's all just all the way down, straight down, um, whereas in Luminar 4, the options are all along the side. So really nice how this one's laid out. Um, I do like the software, and I think that it is good software. And, of course, you have your option to do local masking. You can look at your history, which is really nice. So tons of options here, again, as you can see. So all things considered, which Luminar is right for you, AI or Luminar 4? So I think that Luminar AI is an amazing software. Uh, the AI technology that it has is incredible. Uh, the one thing about it is there is a little bit less options for customization. So AI is great if you just want to hop on the computer and spend just a couple minutes editing your photo and make it look great. Uh, there's a little bit less control. Um, just because you're using the AI, even though you can refine it with masks, but generally speaking, it's going to be for photographers that want less control. They just want that fast edit using the AI technology that is going to look really nice. Luminar 4 is laid out really nicely and has some really great options that I'm probably going to show off some of its effects uh, in a future video. I really do like Luminar 4 for editing your landscape images. Now, both these softwares do work really well together and they can play together really nicely. You can use either of these as a plugin for Photoshop or Lightroom or potentially wherever else you edit your photos. You can also use Luminar 4 and also have Luminar AI for those times when you want the AI to make decisions for you you in to do certain edits. So I do recommend picking up both if you have the option. Um, but if you are only going to get one, I highly recommend Luminar 4 for those of you photographers that want a little more personalization and customization, while Luminar AI is going to be great for those photographers who just want a really quick edit that's going to look pretty good. So that kind of wraps up my thoughts on Luminar 4 versus Luminar AI. I wanted to thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. Um, I really hope you like these kinds of videos where I'm comparing different software outside of Lightroom and Photoshop. It's always nice to have other options to edit your photos in. I will say the one nice thing about Luminar is that it is not subscription based. Once you buy it, you own it. Um, so that is a really nice feature for it to have because I know a lot of people do not like paying the monthly fee to Adobe for Photoshop and Lightroom. So definitely consider picking this up. I do have an affiliate link. If you guys are going to pick up the software, please use my link. Uh, it gets me a small kicker and helps fund these videos. I'd really appreciate it. But again, I'm not making this in order to make money because the affiliate link is not paying out very much. I simply am just making this video because I really wanted to share my knowledge on both the softwares and I've had tons of my my clients ask me which one is right for me. So this is the video for you. So thank you guys so much for checking this out. We will talk to you guys next weekend. And if you did like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions or you want to see anything specifically inside of this software. Thank you guys so much. And we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.